sharing? Can you see it? Uh, just a minute. I I will put it here. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay, so tell me again, please, <laughs> about the intensifiers. So um, intensifiers are used to make adjectives stronger, uh, to say more about an adjective. Also, uh, there are many intensifiers like very, really, extremely, um, incredibly, Mm -hmm. And there is uh, an intensifier, I think uh, uh, it's kind of different, like enough, because um, enough uh, is used to say more about an adjective, like he, a modifier, like, uh -huh. I don't know. Yeah, and, I think the, and, the, mm -hmm. go ahead. But it is used um, actually after mm -hmm. the adjective, right? Yes, yes. Um, example, if you are 17, then you are old enough, old enough to old enough drive. Old to drive a car. Uh -huh. It's um, interesting because here, uh, enough is an, an intensifier because it's connected with the adjective. So if you're intensifying an adjective with enough, you put it after the adjective. So old okay. enough, big enough. Because we can use enough before nouns. For example, yeah. there aren't enough chairs. We don't have enough time. Okay, so here it's uh, working as an intensifier. Yeah. Yes, it's in interesting to see that. Related. Adjectives, okay. yes. Okay. Um, and then they talked a little about strong adjectives. Uh -huh. um, there are many uh, strong adjectives, uh -huh. but they don't usually go with very. You yeah. should pick another um, intensifier like really totally absolutely um yeah <laughs> utterly i think utterly is kind of british it tends to be let me just check here quickly but utterly is something that i hear a lot in british english i don't know if it's they say something about it here utterly yeah uh, but yeah, we can use very with normal adjectives, right? Very big, very small. But when we combine very with a normal adjective, we get a special adjective, like very yeah. big is enormous and huge. Then yeah. we cannot use very with these special adjectives. We cannot say very enormous, very, very huge. In this case, we need to use, like you said, any of these other intensifiers here yeah okay um, then um, there is another particular key about intensifiers mm -hmm. um, some of them are used with particular adjectives mm -hmm. um, for example highly mm -hmm. is um, usually used with successful intelligent, mm -hmm. likely, unlikely, uh, but not with other. Ah, okay, agencies. yes, like uh, that's, mm -hmm, that's very highly, interesting. Mm -hmm. Highly tasty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, highly uh, tasty doesn't, doesn't work, right? Yeah. Highly good doesn't work either. But highly intelligent, highly likely, highly unlikely uh, is kind of common, highly intelligent, highly yeah. successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I search for some news and it's very common to use. For example, uh, it's highly likely that someone will take part in this competition. Yeah, here in the Google, oops, Google search, highly, yeah. you can see highly suspect, that person yeah. is or a highly, <clears throat> a highly sensitive person. 
Oh, yeah. um, you can use it with a verb. I or they highly recommended that book, right? So that's possible. And also remember to use, uh, for example, Google News. So highly exciting moon mission, yeah. right? Uh, so highly exciting is the case here, or highly haunted, uh, highly defamatory and so on and so forth. Okay. Okay. Um, then... Wow, it's uh, a lot of information. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. The, the other topic um, is... Uh, it refers to comparatives and uh -huh. superlatives uh -huh. because we can also use intensifiers with these kind of adjectives. Mm -hmm. um, for example, much, far, a lot, quite a lot, a great deal, a good bit, a fair bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I don't know if I understood it correctly mm -hmm. because um, these ones, those ones are, are used with comparatives. Yes. Uh, and with superlatives, we should use just easily, by far, and much. Yes, yes. So much can be used with both, right? Much, uh, actually, oh. much with superlative. Let's see. The yeah, blue whale uh, is easily the biggest. Um, I don't know how to use much with a superlative adjective, to be honest. Do they give any examples here in oh, the exercise? Yeah. Oh, and I was thinking about it, and I couldn't. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure we can use much with a superlative adjective, but easily, definitely, easily. Uh, so, um, he is easily the most intelligent student. Oh, she is easily yeah. the, uh, or she is by far um, the most active athlete, and so on. But much, not sure about that. <laughs> we use much mm -hmm. definitely with comparatives. Much bigger, yeah. much faster, much older. But it's interesting to try to use these other expressions here. We can use far, yeah. simply far, far older, a lot older, quite a lot older, a fair bit older, a good deal older. It's interesting to try to use yeah. this. Mm -hmm. I like this. Yeah. Okay. Fair bit more complex. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then the last topic. Uh -huh. uh, is the usage of adjectives as intensifier mm. itself. For mm -hmm. example, um, absolute, complete, mm -hmm. total, utter, mm -hmm. real, perfect. Uh, he's a complete idiot. Mm -hmm. For example, not uh, the idiot was complete. Not <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> adjective. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Uh-huh. Yeah, this is utter nonsense. So this is, uh, these are adjectives that can be used to intensify a noun. You can say, he's an idiot, and yeah. then you can say, he's a complete idiot. So they were yeah. talking nonsense, they were talking utter nonsense. Uh, yeah, like you said, so we don't say the idiot was complete, <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah. Did you do some of the exercises? Do you have other questions? Did you make mistakes? Um, no, uh, just uh, um, because in in this exercise there there was a question. For example, are you hungry? Hungry? Uh, there's this question. Are you hungry? And then the answer. Hungry? I am. Then a space to be completed. Is starving. And then you should choose. And then there was two options, like absolutely, extremely, and then you could just choose absolutely starving, not extremely starving. Yeah, extremely starving don't usually go together. I don't know, I think it's a collocation, because the starving is an extreme adjective, and extremely is an uh, extreme intensifier. But it doesn't mean that an extreme intensifier and an extreme adjective will always go together. 
uh, you, you should take uh, collocations into account. So, for example, let me just do something here. Starving. Location. Dictionary. Let's see if they uh, show something for starving. Here, so... Um, I don't know if this dictionary... Yeah, you see, it's for, it means very hungry. The hungry is a base or a basic adjective. Very is a basic yeah. intensifier. Um, there is a um, collocations, collocations, dictionary. This one here. Let me just try this quickly. Starving. Uh, it doesn't have anything. Let's see, starve, starve. Um, yeah, no, just other types of information. So yeah, it does the extremely starving. The it doesn't go. The two words don't go together. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just it. <laughs> very nice. Great job. Great job. Yeah, I think this is very exciting. <laughs> So especially this part here, when you can intensify a comparison, I think it's really cool. And this too, when you can use adjectives to intensify a noun, that's, that's nice. Okay, okay, Sarah, so let's continue with pronunciation. So the last four other consonant sounds, let me open all of them, and then we can see them. Did you write down the words, the example words? Mm, yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, let's get started with the first one here. So what is the sound? So this is not a letter. Some students uh, sometimes say that this is a letter, letter H. It's not the letter, it's the sound. What is the sound of this symbol? Um, it's the voiceless, voiceless, consonant. Uh, I don't know, maybe H. Huh? Huh, huh. Huh. Yes, huh. yes, this yeah. is the R. There are many R's that we make in our throats, but it's similar to our H, huh, huh, but it's different because mm -hmm. it's aspirated, there is a lot of air coming out, it's lighter, but it's this sound, H, huh, H, huh, H. Huh. What huh. are the words? Uh, um, here, hot, hello, ahead, how, Hi. Let me just write these words here, just so you can tell me. So, can you tell me uh, the words again? Here. Uh -huh. Or this one? They oh. they have the same sound. Uh -huh. um, the second one. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> hot. Okay. Hot. Okay. Hello. Okay. Ahead. How. How? Hi. How? How? Like this? Yeah. How that and hi, like this? No, I have. Hate. Hate. E I G. Like this? Yeah. G H T. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna check the symbols. Height. Uh huh. Height. And head. No, he hedge. H E D. Oh, hedge. 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 This one? Yeah. Okay. That's it? Yes. So let's just check the, the pronunciation again. So, see, these two words have the same pronunciation, same symbols. Here, here. Without the context, it's impossible to distinguish the two. Then you have hot and hello, ahead, how. This one is height. Height. Okay, height. So forget about the GH here, it's just height, it's easy. And this one has a J at the end. J, J, J. So hedge. Okay? Okay. okay. Do you know what a hedge is? Hedge. Did you check? No. 
um, like a barrier? It's a barrier made of plants. <laughs> it's uh, made of plants. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's this, you know, it's a, a way to yeah. um, and uh, some people put it around their houses to separate <clears throat> their house or create like walls, but a wall made of a plant, a shrub. Okay. Okay. Very nice. Any questions about the sound? No. No. That's all. all right. Okay, so the next one is le. <laughs> le, le. Le. Yeah, this one, it has two possibilities. It has the le, le, le sound when the tongue goes down. So the tongue begins at the top of the, the mouth and goes down. Le. Mm -hmm. And the opposite mm -hmm. movement, the opposite, like mm -hmm. bail. Uh, when yeah. the tongue is down and then it goes up. So the, uh, mm -hmm. if it is up and goes down, it's one sound. Well, yeah, the, the sounds are different. And if it's down and goes up, it's another. It's the dark L. It's called dark L when it goes up. And uh, I think a normal L if it goes down. So let's see the words uh, that you got as examples. Example words. Um, light. 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 Oops. Va uh -huh. Valley. Valley. Uh, bell. Bell. Level. Level. Only these, right? Yes. Now, in the word light, does the tongue go down or up? Does the tongue go down or up? Light. Light. La down, right? Goes down. Goes down. Light. Yeah. And here, valley, valley. Um, uh, down to? Yeah. What about valley? What about this one? Does it go uh, up or down? Up. Up. And here, there are two L's. The first one? Yeah. Uh, down and the second one, up. Yes, up. level. Yeah. Okay, good. Nice. The next one is... Uh, okay. Okay, the last two are special, very important. Um, which one is this? What? What? <laughs> what? Exactly, exactly. What? <laughs> what? What? Very short. Uh, so let's see the words with the sound. One. One. Wet. Wet. When. This one. Yes. Uh, Bewer. I think, is it this one? Yes. Yeah. Beware. <laughs> Beware. Beware. Huh? Beware. Quick. Quick. Queen. Queen. Okay. So just checking the pronunciation here again. So w see, all of them have the symbol w. w. So here's one. This is very important because a lot of, especially beginners, they tend to say this word as on, on, two, three, on. Mm -hmm. So the, yeah. the first sound is not a no sound, yeah. it's a w sound, right? But, but this is something that uh, after a while people learn kind of fast, so one. Here again, wet, when, when. and this one, beware. Beware. Okay, so this is an S sound, like in Erica, and this is the strong syllable, the stressed Beware. syllable. Beware. 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 Quick. Quick. Queen. Queen. Yeah. You're going to see the vowels now, and you see, you're going to see the difference between this one and this one. Queen. Very okay. nice. Very nice. Sarah. So, and the other one is? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, very important, too. So what are the words? Useful. Sorry? Uh, useful. 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 Um, use. 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 Yeah. Uh, yet. Yellow. Yellow. Um, beauty. 
Beauty. Beauty. Mm -hmm. Beauty. Few. Mm -hmm. This one? Few? Yes. Clearly and cute. Cute. Like this. Yeah. Okay, so let's see if the symbol is present in all of them. Yes. So see how it's um, shown here. Use, useful. Okay. Useful. Yes. Use with a Z sound. Use. Uh, actually, as a verb, it has a Z sound. As a noun, it has an S sound. The use. Okay. What's the use? Uh, but as a verb, yes. Z sound. Uh, okay, to use. And, and and usage, usage or usage. I, uh, yeah, let's check that. What, which one do you think it is? With S. Yes, sure. with an S sound? Let's see. Usage. It's an S sound, usage. Ah, okay. Oh my God. I always, uh, yeah, I think I always said usage. <laughs> yeah. Which is, yeah, it's not correct. It's just S sound. So we either say usage, 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 or usage. Usage, nice, usage. cool, usage, yes. I think I tend to, this is interesting, a lot of uh, words that have an S between vowels, I tend to voice them, say the Z sound. Yeah. But we have to pay attention because it doesn't have a Z sound, it's an S sound. Okay, here, yet. Yet, yellow. Yeah. Um, beauty. Beauty. Uh, few, few and cute. cute. Yes, usage, usage. <laughs> Try not to forget that. Very nice. And now let's talk about the stories. Stonewall, okay. yeah? Is yeah, it the yeah. last episode of the bus? <laughs> Is it yeah. one per week? It's one per week, right? Yes, I think so. Ah. This is the last episode, but how many stories are told in this episode? Um, uh, actually, this one is about a uh, documentary that was made in 1989 about the uprising. Mm. So there what are many the... people talking. What is it called? What is the documentary called? Um, I don't know if they, they <laughs> here, here because it's a story called okay remembering Stonewall. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there you go. Um, so tell me about it. Um, so uh, this episode is about uh, this documentary, as I said, um, and then they will try to explain what really happened at that night. So, uh, in the early morning, hours of June 28th, 1969, the police raided a gay bar in New York City called Stonewall. And after this, um, uh, uh, and uprising took place and this uprising was a turning point in the LGBTQ right movement. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so important. Mm -hmm. um, and also um, it's worth noting that this episode history is kind of murky. No one knows exactly uh, how it began. Uh, the documentary? What, no, the, the uprising. Ah, the uprising, okay. Because at that time, uh, police used to, to raid gay bars uh, all the time. Mm -hmm. And why at that specific night, uh, the riot um, started. Started. Uh, it's not well documented, so they uh, will try to to investigate it uh, in uh -huh. this documentary. Okay. Um, and 
So there are, they interviewed uh, people who were there, who witnessed the episode. Uh, one of these people is Silvia Rivera. Uh, she is a drag, like she started dressing in drag in 1961. And she told um, a little bit about um, uh, how gay people lived at that time, at 60s. Okay. So she um, was there, right? She was there that night? Yes. Mm -hmm. she, she was there. And she talked a little bit about um, how gay people lived in the 60s and then about the episode, it's the episode itself. Mm -hmm. And um, she, she said something about, um, for example, they, there were gay bashings. Mm -hmm. uh, what what are gay thought, bashing? Uh, like to, to treat gay people with violence. Yes, attacks, right? Attacks, yeah. Mm -hmm. All the time, uh, not just by the police, but by people, Other people. in general. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Men and women. Mm -hmm. And so they, they use it to think that this was part of the lifestyle of being a drag or of being a gay at that time mm -hmm. um, but then uh, oh, that's very that, sad that's very sad yeah yes. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. but then uh, after Stonewall everything changed uh -huh. um, they could react to all this violence mm -hmm. um, and then they also interviewed Seymour Pine, mm -hmm. um, who was assigned as deputy inspector in charge of public morals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, his duty was to enforce all laws concerning vice and gambling. Mm -hmm. Vice. And vice. Vi vice. Mm -hmm. Vice. Mm -hmm. And at this time, all stuff related to homosexuality mm -hmm. um, was seen as vice. For example, it was included in the penal code. Mm -hmm. I don't know, being a drag, um, it was included in, in the yeah, penal code. Uh -huh. because they consider it, uh -huh, go ahead. This guy. Yes, uh, with exactly. Natural attire. Uh And then uh, these uh, raids in gay yeah. bar was common, um, and he was. And at at uh, this, that night uh, of Stonewall uprising. He was in charge and he loaded uh, the police cars, uh, unmarked police cars with officers, eight officers, mm -hmm. and headed to Stonewall. Mm. So he was there. He, he was also a witness, not just a witness, he was act <laughs> actively active participating in the event. And then uh, the other one is the other interviewer is Red interviewee, Maroney. Interviewee. interviewee. Okay, yes, sadly. Was Red Maroney. Mm -hmm. um, he used it to rent out and also work in many gay, gay bars that existed at that time in New York. Mm -hmm. and, and he just talked. Uh, about uh, these bars, that 90% of these bars were controlled by mafia, 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 yeah. mm -hmm. mafia. And, uh, and these bars were always 
shut down, close down, and then moved around all the time. Um, like it was like uh, I don't know. Um, and they uh, were dumps. Dumps. Yeah. Um, they didn't have values, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the other one is Joan Nestle. Castle. Uh, she was a co-founder of a collection of lesbian culture. And uh, she talked about um, lesbian bars mm -hmm. at that time. Um, and she said uh, there was two police uh, interventions. Mm -hmm. The first one was a classical one. The, the policy uh, raided lesbian bars regularly hauling the women away in petty wagons. Mm -hmm. But then uh, they could just uh, enter in a lesbian bar and if the cop really resented the butch woman, uh, the lesbian, um, they could um, harass one of the women, for example, get her away, throw her against a wall uh, to get their payoff. Pay so off. there was there mm -hmm. these two kinds of interventions. Mm -hmm. Violent interventions. Very yes. violent. Yeah, very distressing. Quite distressing. Uh, so. Um, the, the first part of this documentary uh, is just about the context, right? Mm -hmm. Setting the, the context mm -hmm. <laughs> to what really happened um, at that night. Okay. Uh, and then Stonewall was one of these gay bars. Uh, all these gay bars were painted black, charcoal black. Uh, and so it's on uh, too, and uh, uh, it was dimly lit, uh, and then there was I don't know a kind of a password to enter there. You you should say uh, Mary called me. Mary sent me. Mary sent me. <laughs> yeah, Mary yeah. sent me. That's the password. Uh, Mary sent me. Yeah. Um, and then, um, uh, how, how was the, the place physically? Uh, physically? Yeah, the color and the light. Painted black, black and yeah, dimly painted black. Painted black. Okay, hello? And um, and then mm -hmm. um, in June 27th, uh, it was almost midnight when um, Seymour Pine, <laughs> that deputy inspector, with his moral squad, pulled up to Stonewall Inn. But um, the patrons or the dress. The patrons, and, yeah, the patrons are the customers at a bar. Clients. Clients, uh huh. They, they fought back. They, they started back? to fought, fought back. Fault. They started to resist. Uh huh, okay. It was different. Uh -huh. uh, they don't know how it started. Mm -hmm. um, he described a uh, specific. Uh, seen because they were trying to to arrest a drag queen. They 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 jumped her out. No, they jumped her in the 
police car and he and she or he I don't know how to refer uh, she probably she he she tried to to sneak or to to jump out the police car. Uh huh. Then the police chased chased and handcuffed her. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then uh, she was mashing a cop with her high heels uh. <laughs> and frisk and started to frisk him for the keys. Uh-huh. And could get the keys and release it herself from the handcuffs. Oh my god. Uh. She she gave the keys to all the other drags. Uh-huh. And that's when all hell broke loose. Yes. <laughs> like a good that expression. <laughs> Sorry? The inspector said it. That's when all hell broke, broke loose. Broke loose, yes. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So the cops had to come back to Stonewall mm-hmm. uh, while the crowd uh, were out attempting to uproot a parking meter. Mm-hmm. And they used this parking meter as a batting ramp to break down the door. And then they oh. entered the place and so. Uh, the violence started and the police was scared. Wow, there were and, Molotov cocktails. Oh my goodness. Yes, everything. Mm-hmm. So that's the that story. And um, the important thing is that the world took, the world, uh, took notice of this, right? Mm-hmm. This riot. And yeah. then they... This, movement uh, is spread is spread around the country and the world probably do they talk about the presence of the media there because usually when there are events like that the media comes and uh, it, this was in 69 right 69 yeah it yeah uh, so it might have had a, a role in spreading uh, the news about this event, right? So everyone in the world. Wow, yeah. so it was crazy, crazy. Yeah, try to find the documentary. Uh, is there another yeah. story here? What's this? Stay with us. There are many people yeah. talking about uh, their point of view, right? From people who were there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. But I, I just prepared this first part. Oh, ah, yes, yeah, very long. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, what, what, tell me, the, you mentioned some words that are probably new, right? That you yeah. learned. This expression, yeah. all hell broke loose. And yeah. is there anything else that you took note, like a new word? Yeah, yeah for example, um, murky. Yeah, murky. Mm-hmm. Uh, Let's find some synonyms for murky here. Murky. So... Oh, uh, thesaurus, thesaurus. It might help. Yeah, so kind of dark, because you cannot distinguish the details of something. So murky means that it's obscure, dark. Um, Okay. Kind of fuzzy, nebulous. Okay, what else? Uh... Um, then dressy in drag. I didn't know this expression. What is the expression um, again? Dressed in drag. Dressed in, yes, dressed mm-hmm. in drag. Mm-hmm. Um, dump. Dump, yeah. When you say this place is a dump. <laughs> a dump. Let's see. Uh, um, this slummy establishment. A hole, <laughs> a hole, a mess, a joint. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, uh, howling women away in paddy wagons. Paddy wagons. Howling away and paddy wagons. <laughs> yeah, the hole. You mean hole like this hole here? Hole, this one? 
No, no, it's with no. a U, right? With, with you, yeah. You. Uh, to move something to another spot. Yeah, to haul, to bring, to carry. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is your general... Oh, this one, uh, book, book, book haul. A book haul, book haul, yeah. This is a what common is phrase. Uh, book haul. I think it's when you manage to to get some books. Is when you go to and you when you go and buy books, and then you either post, either you do either a post, a vlog, or any other form of social media. So it's a book haul is a phrase connected with the use of social media posting. Okay. It's interesting. I didn't know that, but I started seeing this uh, in uh, people that I follow on Instagram, on Facebook, book haul. What's this? It's so it seems to have been created for social media posting. Okay. okay. So you show you show the books that you bought or that you got somehow to people in posts. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we have one minute, Sarah. What is your general opinion about this um, event? Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think uh, uh, it's interesting to know more uh -huh. about uh, this story. Um, so I didn't know about it at all. Me neither, uh, yeah. And... Um, uh, I don't know, maybe these extreme uh, actions are necessary <laughs> sometimes to to change things. Yeah, to uh, push um, things further. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. It's not so good, but sometimes uh, you can't find another way. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, this is very complicated, it's very complex, because uh, the law will not help you because it's against a, a certain group of people, right? So how can you uh, change the situation? And it's not that they nothing was happening before. They were being constantly bombarded, right, with attacks and things like that. They yeah. were being attacked. Uh, yeah. by everyone, including the police. So yeah. it's a, a situation in which you, people may feel impotent. And then there is a, this explosion, right? People explode and yeah. there is something like nobody can explain how it happened, wh why it happened, the details, but um, it happens. There is an explosion because something needs to be changed. It's violent, which is not good, but... It helps spread the word <laughs> and, and people uh -huh. start to become more aware. Very interesting, mm -hmm. Sarah. Very nice. Very nice. So okay. that's it for today. Great job with your practice here. Okay. Um, I hope you have a very good week and I'll see you next time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> see you.